today the class will be on urine formation urine formation comprises of three main steps three main steps include ultrafiltration second step is selective reabsorption while the third step would be secretion ultrafiltration is now we have the glomerulus where there is an efferent arteriole and then there is an efferent arteriole so there is blood within this glomerulus and they need to be filtered out in order to form urine but we can't let all of the substances in the blood to come into the urine so we need to filter out whatever that is important to the body and we need to keep it so the endothelial membrane of the glomerulus and the bowman's capsule is adapted in a way that certain substances that that uh, certain substances will be kept within the body itself so let's see what these mechanisms are so first of all the glomerulus contains of its endothelium and they have pores these pores will allow passage of solutes and proteins into the glomerule into the bowman's capsule but it will block red blood cell passage the bowman's capsule on the other hand will have podocytes these podocytes will prevent the passage of plasma proteins so basically even though the blood contains rbcs and plasma proteins out of that only a small amount that is only salts amino acids glucose vitamins nitrogenous waste and small other molecules will enter into the bowman's capsule large molecules like platelets rbcs will not pass through the bowman's capsule so you must know the composition of the glomerular filtrate is similar to that of the plasma except they there aren't any blood cells platelets or plasma proteins that's an important point you have to no second step like i mentioned before will be selective reabsorption now what is selective reabsorption even though we did not send out plasma proteins and rbcs or platelets there are other substances in the body that we need that is we need glucose we need amino acids so we need to reabsorb them back into the blood that is that process is called selective reabsorption the process through which useful molecules like ions and water from the glomerular filtrate are recovered and returned to our blood and then into the capillary network of tubules now that is selective reabsorption we'll talk more about this and more about these substances further this is just a basic introduction finally the third step of urine formation like i said before is secretion secretion is so now uh, even though we took uh, reabsorbed whatever substances f- uh, from the urine back into the blood there are substances that we also need to fine tune and send them back into the urine so that is where it secretes the substances that are in the blood back into the urine process by which foreign materials and substances that are not required to the body they are cleared out into the urine filtrate and that is called secretion um substances that are secreted would be um ammonia h plus creatinine these are not required to our blood we have to secrete them out to our urine that's what happens here that's just the basic introduction of urine formation let's see a broad detailed idea of urine formation that occurs at different steps uh, at different sites of the nephron so as you can see this is a nephron this nephron has various parts so let's name them this is a efferent arteriole this is a efferent arteriole and the efferent arteriole then forms the vasa recta this is our glomerulus that you already know this is our proximal convoluted tubule this is our loop of henle 
this is our distal convoluted tubule and this is our collecting duct. So, at these various points there are uh, reabsorption and secretion occurring. Ultrafiltration occurs only at this level, but reabsorption and secretion occurs at proximal colonoliter tubule, loop of Hamlet, DCT and CD. Now, let us see the process of urine formation. At this point, fluid is now at the level of the proximal convoluted tubule. At this region, there is selective reabsorption of ions, water and variable, variable, valuable nutrients from the initial filtrate. We will see what is being reabsorbed at this point. Reabsorption occurs in sodium, chloride, potassium, glucose, amino acids, urea and of course bicarbonate. Do not forget that water is also being reabsorbed at the proximal convoluted tubule. You must know that glucose and amino acids are reabsorbed actively while chloride is being reabsorbed passively. So would be bicarbonates as well. Bicarbonates basically while be, it being absorbed it maintains the pH balance of the body fluids. So as these solutes are being reabsorbed from the proximal convoluted tubule there is the uh, there is water also being reabsorbed passively by osmosis. As you can see, water is being reabsorbed from the proximal convoluted tubule via osmosis. A major portion of water is being reabsorbed at this point. As the filtrate passes through the proximal convoluted tubule, you must know that secretion of various substances back into the uh, Urine, uh, back into the urinary system occurs also at the proximal convoluted tubule. You must know that creatinine, various drugs, uh, H plus which is uh, secreted actively as well as ammonia which is uh, secreted passively occurs at the proximal convoluted tubule. Now since there is reabsorption of water and secretion of various substances, the solute at the proximal convoluted tubule becomes very concentrated when it passes from the proximal convoluted tubule to the loop of Henle. When it passes to the descending loop of Henle, there is again reabsorption of water. There is reabsorption of water occurring at the descending limb of loop of Henle. As a result, obviously, the a filter rate is going to be very concentrated and this will go up into the ascending limb of loop of Henle. You must know at the ascending limb of loop of Henle it is impermeable for water to be reabsorbed. Even though water is not reabsorbed you must know that there is other substances that are reabsorbed that is sodium potassium and chloride. Therefore, there is a very diluted filtrate that will go into the distal convoluted tubule. It is more diluted than it was in the loop of Henle. At the distal convoluted tubule, you must know that uh, it, there is uh, sodium, chloride, calcium, magnesium and bicarbonate being reabsorbed while there is secretion of H plus and potassium into the DCT. Potassium is being secreted via active transport. Distal tubule will also contribute in the regulation of pH by secretion of H plus and again reabsorption of bicarbonate. H plus and bicarbonate contribute for pH regulation. So that was the electrolyte absorption and secretion at the distal convoluted tubule. Now let's talk about the water reabsorption. We must know that uh, water reabsorption at the DCT 
occurs via two hormones that is ADH and aldosterone. So when ADH is there, water is being reabsorbed from the DCT and when aldosterone acts, there is sodium and water being reabsorbed while potassium is being secreted. That occurs at the DCT. Aldosterone is secreted by the adrenal gland. Now, when the stimulate, uh, now when the fi filter rate is passed through the DCT to the convoluted tubule, there is further reabsorption of sodium chloride, as well as there is a special substance that is added extra at this level, and that is urea. So, as, uh, even at the uh, CD, there is action of ADH and aldosterone acting to reabsorb water. Since water is being reabsorbed, the concentration of the fil uh, filter rate is high at the convoluted at the collecting ducts. Therefore, urine is you sorry. Therefore, urea is being diffused uh, to, into the interstitial fluid. And that is, uh, and therefore, there is fine tuning at the level of the collecting ducts where ADH and aldosterone gives a hormonal action, and then finally, urine is being formed. That is the process of urine formation at the in the human uh, urinary system. Thank you.